Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 11 of the Endless Runner series. In this episode, we are going to implement the collection of coins. So let's get started. Okay, to create a collectible coin, we need to create our own base coin class in C++. And there are several components that we need in it, like a static mesh component, of course. We need a rotating movement component so that the coin is spinning around. We need a sphere component that we will check for collision with the character and a sound that plays pickup sound on collision. So let's go ahead and go into CPP classes and create a new one. It's an actor and let's say coin item to create class and go into our code, minimize this and open up our coin item. So let's start implementing it. First, the components. So like you now should be familiar with, creating a U property, make it visible anywhere for components make it blueprint read only and give it a category of components. And forward declare a U scene component, which will act as our root component. Copy this guy here. And now what we need is a class use static mesh component for the coin mesh. Let's call it coin mesh. Let's let's call this component, not component. So and the next one will be class U. sphere component which will act as our trigger zone sphere collider the next one would be a class u rotating movement component which is a special component that automatically rotates the coin mesh rotating movement and lastly let's give it a category of assets like we did with the character and call it class u sound base overlap sound so these are the components we need we don't need a tick function delete that Let's go into our CPP file and remove the tick function here. Move this and let's create our components. So scene component equals create default sub object. You scene component, give it a text of scene component. and root component equals scene component. I think by now you should know the whole trill how this is done. So let's get this over with. You sphere component, text, call it sphere collider. Sphere Collider dot setup attachment to the scene component. Then the coin mesh. Equals create default sub object. Use static mesh component. Text. Coin mesh but 
attachment, sphere collider. So the mesh will be a child of the sphere collider. And coin mesh dot set collision profile, which is profile name. And we need to actually do this also on overlap only pawn. Do this also on the sphere collider. So, and now for the last component, the rotating movement equals create default sub object. It's a U rotating movement component. Text rotating movement. And there's one default value that we need to set. We need to specify the rotation rate. So rotation rate equals, and we need pointer here, F rotator. The pitch is zero. The yaw, we are rotating 180 degrees and like this. So let's compile this, go into our editor under blueprints and let's create our coin item. So select coin item, call it BP underscore coin, open it up. You can see we have our scene component, the sphere collider underneath, coin mesh and our rotating movement component. Then we go ahead and select our coin mesh and we can check the collision, overlap only pawn, and the same with this one, the scene component we have. So compile this, save it, and let's go back to our code. So like with the obstacles, let's figure out what to do with the coin, how it's gonna work. So the coin, the sphere collider, if it overlaps with the run character, it should then call the game mode, a function in the game mode called add coin, which will increase the coin count plus one. And for this episode, we are going to just display the total coin number every time a coin is collected in the output log. And next episode, we are actually going to implement the HUD, which will be really fun learning about multicast events and stuff. So, but let's get this first going. So for this, we need to specify a function that we can add to the sphere colliders event on component begin overlap, like you've seen with the others. So let's do this in the begin play. Let's start again by seeing what we need to do. So sphere collider dot on component begin overlap. This is what we need. Dot add dynamic this and coin item on sphere overlap, for example. Let's call it like this. So this doesn't exist yet. And we need to figure out, okay, what's the signature again? So let's go into the uncommon component begin overlap. Here we have the signature, go in there. And we can see we need to start here. The first two are just definitions and this is the whole signature. So let's copy the whole thing and go back into our coin item.h, make it the u function, call it void on sphere overlap, I think we called it, and paste this in and then remove the commas again. So this is actually really the best approach to finding the signature that you need for those functions. Go in there, see what, how the event is specified, what the signature is, and then just copy it and use it. And so we implement this function and now we edit it. So in here, what we need to do is, like we've seen with the others, is check to see if it's the run character. So a run character. And we do this by casting. 
equals cast a run character the other actor that is colliding with the sphere collider and if run character then we actually need to call our game mode. And to call our game mode, I really want to use our character instead of having like all the items that need to use the gameplay statics to get the game mode casted to the game mode. The character itself only gets it once. So what we can really do is say run character add coin. And maybe in the future there might be functionality that you want to call stuff in the character on add coin. So let's do it like this and not get the game mode and call the add coin, but call the add coin function in the run character. So we need to implement this. So let's do a u function and call it void add coin. Implement this and this does nothing else than use the run game mode dot add coin which we need to implement and like I said maybe later there's something that you want to also do in the character when adding a coin maybe highlighting him or I don't know what so this is I think the better solution to call character and the character calls the game mode and in the game mode we will add a function make it function make it blueprint callable in case you want to call it and say void add coin and implement this so now we have our coin item which on overlap checks if it's the character and then adds the coin calls the coin function add coin function in the game mode what we need to do because it's the central hub where everything is counted, collected and stuff. So in here we need a new U property, make it visible anywhere and say in 32 total coins equals zero. Initialize them with zero and once we add a coin, then we increment it by one. And what I'm going to do next episode is calling an event that we are creating, broadcasting an event, so that the HUD that we are creating there will be updated. In here, for testing purposes, let's just do a UE log and say log temp warning and text, call it total coins. total coins. Let's compile this and see if we can collect coins. And before we can collect coins, we of course need to spawn them in the scene. So let's go to our floor tile and go to the H file. And now we need another T subclass off. This time it's an A coin item. Forward declared here, A coin item. We move the H file here and call it coin item class. So, and what we need also is now we can implement the full percentages. What we are doing in here are hard coded values. And for you to play with it or to get a better range, we make them U properties. So we need three values that are added anywhere blueprint read only. Let's give it a category of config and say float spawn percent one equals 0 0.1 F. Copy this. Percent two will be 0 0.3 and 
three will be 0 0.5. So these are just values that you can play with and change and see the best way how obstacles and coins are spawned. So let's go into our floor tile. And in here, first we copy this, change the values later, but make it a coin item, import the coin item dot h coin and give it the class first a coin item give it the class of coin item class Spawn location, spawn parameters. So now what we do here is we say spawn percent one, spawn percent two. This will be spawn percent two and spawn percent three. And this last one will be three and one. So like when we look at the numbers, there's 10% chance to not spawn anything, then between 10 or 20% to spawn a small obstacle, 20% big obstacle, and 50% coins. So like I said, you can play with these values and see how they turn out. And this is what we did. So let's compile now. And of course, one more thing, check is valid. That class, so in case we forget to set it in the blueprints, the things won't crash, so let's compile again, go to our editor, let's hit play. And of course we forgot to add the class, that's why nothing is spawning. So go into our floor tile and add the BP coin, compile, save. And now when we start, we can see we have coins that we can pick up and die. So let's check output log. And we saw here total coins, one, two, three, four, five. Let's try this again, clear the log, hit play, click on it. And you can see the coin count increases. Now, the only thing that we need to do is destroy the coins when they are collected and play that collection sound. So let's go back to code and go to our coin file. And if it's run character, let's say before that, if our overlap sound is valid, then we are using the U gameplay statics, play sound at location, get world, overlap sound and get actor location. And then we add the coin and after that we destroy the coin itself. So this now should work. We are playing the sound at the coin location, adding the coin and destroying the coin. So let's compile. And once it compiled, go back to the editor, click play. And we, of course, forgot to go into our coin, open it up, and of course, set our overlap sound. And it seems there is an issue, we can't edit it, and that is probably because we made a copy and paste error, we made it visible anywhere, so we call it edit anywhere, compile it again, and then we should be able to set the sound in the editor. And now we can set the sound and we click the Sun Temple Retro Bonus whatever coin. So let's go to the main level, hit play. And the sound works. I'm collecting the coins. Hit escape and if we look in the output log we collected like 11 points. So this is it for this episode. Coin collecting works in its basic form. And in the next episode, we are going to implement the HUD for the coins, where we will then use multicast events to send an event to the HUD class to increase or set a new value. So thank you for watching. I hope you really liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new episodes are coming out. This would really help me. So 
Thanks again and see you in the next one.